Welcome to our Popery Lecture Series for November. We have our guest lecturer today, and he introduced himself, but just two things, because most of you have been here already today, I don't want to waste out time listening to me. Thank you, Nancy Jeffries, for getting our RSVPs for our lunch next week. The biggest thing is I'm asking everyone to please invite a guest. Invite a friend, invite a neighbor, invite somebody to come and check out ElderQuest, see what we have to offer. So please, bring somebody to the next few weeks. We have a couple of weeks left for this semester. It's a great opportunity to let people know what we do and who we are. Every time, all the way until Tuesday morning, vote. Get out and get the vote out. Remind your voters to vote. And the same what I'm giving you do is vote like your life depends on it. But now we're going to turn the time over to John for a party. Good morning. Uh, my name is John Nebaker. I'll be doing the potpourri this morning uh, because we had a hard time getting somebody to come in, so I'm filling in for them. Today we're going to be talking about conspiracy theories. Um, mostly I would like to ask question already, what is a conspiracy theory? Anybody would like to make comment on that? Or or they already know? A conspiracy uh, theory is according to whoever thinks it's a conspiracy. I mean, their opinion. So there could be a variety of, you know, in my opinion. But hopefully you'll help me figure that one out. Well, to an extent, she's correct. It is a theory. It's based on whoever is putting that theory out at that time. And it's basically really true. Um, well, honestly, we're going to have some stuff on the screen here today. I looked it up on the internet called conspiracies.net. And guess what I found? They had a list of what they thought were the conspiracies. And uh, the most prevalent ones, there's about 75 they have listed. And uh, I was just going to read a couple of these as we go through them. The first one starts with a flying saucer crashed in Roswell in 1947. How about that one? How about Adolf Hitler fakes his death? And of course, Area 51. How about the Bermuda Triangle? And it goes on and on, you know, Clinton conspiracy, CIA conspiracies, Elvis Presley faked his own death. And, of course, others of that type, about the Holocaust revisionists. Others are on, the, on that list, uh, I thought I'd make sure, um, JFK, uh, we all know about JFK's assassination. I'm sorry, we all kind of lived through it a little bit. Uh, others, one here, the Manhattan Project, Mars, is there life on Mars? And um, I guess there's one about Michael Jackson that I haven't heard about. The moon landing was faked. And uh, here's another one down here, Pearl Harbor. It, it really goes on and on and on. So I got these here of uh, that. Of course, there's one about Shakespeare, uh, kind of interesting there. Um, the Philadelphia Experiment, uh, Trump conspiracy, conspiracies, and uh, UFO conspiracies. Of course, there's one about vaccines and vegan conspiracy, cow, cowspiracy, uh, water fluoridation in Zionist. It's, it, it's, it's going on. I mean, it's, there's just a, you know, a splattering of us, you know, 75 of them. But honestly, there's probably hundreds of more. Those are just some of the more noticeable ones. John? Yes. I would, uh, I would characterize these as, uh, uh, alternate uh, explanations for what's happened. Uh, that's what the conspiracy theories are. Well, that's, I like that. Uh, they are just uh, they people look at the evidence and uh, they can think of another explanation. It's like going to a court. Uh, the prosecution has a theory of how somebody uh, what happened. Uh, the police do, and uh, the. Uh, the defense has a different theory as uh, a way to explain what happened. That's what conspiracy theories are. <laughs> I'm glad we just come off that case law thing. 
Anyway, I picked out these here. Um, we have a question up here, right? Yeah. I I think a theory is is just a theory and not a fact. Well, that's true. It is a theory. It's not a fact. It's only a fact if it's ever proven. But the question about this, many of these have never been proven. And they're still out there. Um, here's some of the more prevalent ones I just wanted to pull out of that. The flying saucer crashed in Roswell. A world ruled by reptiles. Adolf Hitler fakes his death. Area 51, Bermuda Triangle. Elvis Presley fakes his own death. The Holocaust revisionists and Jeff Kelly assassination. Moon mining was faked. Pearl Harbor, Shakespeare, the Philadelphia Experiment, and UFO, and UFO conspiracies. Uh, those have been prevalent in society for a long time. Let's put it that way. Some of these go back almost 100 years or more. I thought I'd bring a few of these up here about this one. Uh, this one is not on the list, but there's something I thought maybe we could talk about a, a few moments about. Abraham Lincoln's assassination. Now, we all know about the assassination. We read it in the history books. But, here's the but. There's a story out that John Wilkes Booth did not die. He was not killed in that farmhouse. And that he lived for many years afterward. Did you hear about that? Well, that's, actually, he was buried secretly the first time. He was buried secretly. Anyway, the family of John Wilkes Booth wants to have his body exhumed, but the state of Maryland did not let them. They've been trying to get this done for years. That would be another good story we could actually talk about in the future. But he was actually buried secretly, buried for about four years. And uh, <laughs> it's kind of crazy to find out something like that. How about the Kandinsky explosion in 1908? Many of you heard about that? In 1908, in the Siberia, an explosion took place equal to about 100 atomic bombs. It was in Siberia, so it was not very well advertised at the time. It covered basically 100 square miles, destroyed a lot of area. And guess what? Nobody actually investigated it until after World War I, almost 20 years later, or I'll say 10 years later. And then, because it was in the Soviet Union, it was kept under cap until just about the 1990s. But the theories on this explosion have been asteroids, comets, spacecraft. So just kind of give you an idea about that one. Now, I may have possibly be what happened next. Maybe that's why the Zarnie's uh, family may have been executed because they maybe knew too much. Who knows? John, yes. a question on that one. Yes. Uh, I, I, I've seen pictures of uh, the, uh, the way that uh, trees uh, had been mowed down in large, in, in this very large area. Uh, was there, I, what I never saw, was, was there a crater of some sort also as part of that that they found? All we saw was the pictures of the trees be, that had been knocked over as a result of this explosion. Well, that's basically what the same thing I've come across with is the trees were knocked over in this explosion. Ironically, there's another interesting thing, and maybe I can bring that up in another presentation in the future, but the trees, where they were knocked over in this uh, I guess you could call it some, a circle, was not in a typical, you know, like a meteorite circle. It was in a shape like a, almost like a butterfly. So it really kind of makes it even more mysterious. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, it would be very interesting to find out more about this one in, you know, detail. Yeah. The uh, Sahara assassination at the end of World War One, and of course, we all know about that. I could go around right on. We don't need to do that. But the story goes on about Anastasia. That's the biggie. And, of course, we all know about the movie with uh, Ingrid Bergman and Will Brenner. And a lot of people we know 
and our people have actually studied it, and we actually know a lot about it. Um, the movie became so popular that uh, they got an Academy Award for this movie. And of course, our favorite company, Disney had to do theirs too. And there you see, Disney doing theirs, which contributes to the story and the myth about Anastasia. Uh, and of course, ironically, I have a granddaughter named Anastasia. <laughs> Um, a lady named Anna, I think her Anna, Anna, Ann Anderson was the one in the movie portrayed to be the person who had been the missing Anastasia. Anyway, that's another story we could talk about in the future, if you like. Uh, there's a lot of uh, twists and turns in that story. Um, but nobody really knew anything until after the Soviet Union had collapsed and they were actually able to go to the grave site and find the bodies. How about that? But they didn't find all the bodies in the same place. Anyway, interesting story. Anybody got a comment on that one? A quick question? Yes, go ahead. Uh, is, is, do I remember correctly that there was some attempt well, the question is whether or not Anastasia was actually killed, right? That's correct. That's where that's where the theory arises, and the uh, uh, I think I remember that uh, there were some people who claimed that they uh, knew uh, of her descendants. In other words, she wasn't killed, uh, but there were some DNA tests done, if I remember that correctly. But they ended up being inconclusive. Is that that's correct. Is that uh, what? Uh, is that? Uh, yeah, it's it's actually to a certain extent correct. They actually did some DNA tests after the Soviet Union collapsed, and uh, the problem was the gravesite only had like four of the six bodies, and so that creates another problem. So anyway, if you'd like to learn more about that, we can do that too. And here's another the story, uh, another DVD you can get on this story. And here's a picture of the family. If I believe right, the girl right here, that's Anastasia right there, the one that's on the right there. She was one of the younger ones. Pearl Harbor has an interesting concept, and that was in the list that I really had here from on that website. Uh, there's two or three problems with Pearl Harbor, and I'd like to just mention a kind of a typical topical for one here. I'd really like to do a presentation on that one in the future, too. Uh, one thing that I've always had a problem with with Pearl Harbor is why the United States has all their fleet in there at one time before the attack, knowing that they could be attacked any time. They had all the battleships and cruisers and pretty much the whole fleet there. Any person with a, you know, an admiral with a th concept or mind would not do that. Anyway, I've got a question over here. My dad had been in the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Swallow the button. Hit the button. No, so you're good. The lights on, you're good. The lights on. Lights on? Well, yeah. it's part of my mind. My dad was in Pearl Harbor just before it was bombed, and he said that morning that watched. Um, <laughs> I'll hold it for you. <laughs> He was in Pearl Harbor just before it happened, and he said that morning there were no watches out or anything. They had pulled everybody off, and so there's good reasons to believe that it was planned. Yeah, I would like to really do a presentation on that in the future. I think Leading up to the whole thing and from our various other points of view, because there's some things that bother me about that one. And like you said, there was no watches. Why was all the ships there? The only ships that weren't there were the aircraft carriers. That doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? It really doesn't. Anyway, we'll move on to the next one here. Adolf Hitler's death. Was it faked? Did he fake it? There's uh, evidence of possibility. 
According to the reports, he lived in the course of uh, documentaries. There was two submarines that ended up in Argentina toward the end of the war. So there's a possibility, and of course, there's been some documentary, you know, type of movies saying that he lived his life out in South America somewhere. So it might be interesting to find out if that really, you know, some of those things are relevant or not. John F. Kennedy's death. Oh, gosh. I think everybody was out to get him. The CIA, FBI, uh, Cuba, the mobsters, uh, you just about name it. But who had the most interesting thing? I mean, most of us here, when I was a kid, I was glued to the TV. Boom. He was killed. And then, Two days later, Lee Harvey Wildwell was killed. And uh, that really threw everything in a uh, you know, quagmire. They, just about every agency or somebody had something that could possibly cause somebody to want to kill Kennedy. Um, but it'd be interesting to find out some more details to that effect. Moon landing, fake or real? was obviously a Hollywood ploy, wasn't it? <laughs> it was filmed in Hangar 59 or something like that, wasn't it? Uh, Say what it is. <laughs> um, I don't think that has to be, yeah, this one can be pretty well, I mean, seriously. You could have been filmed in a studio and it may not have been, but uh, I'm going to go with my belief. It was for real. It was actually up the moon when it came back. But if you want to believe it was filmed in a studio, go go right ahead. I mean, it's <laughs> the twin towers. Yes, we got a person back here. There was an astronaut that said that it was fake. Oh, okay. And the producer who created it. The video of it happening also said that it was fake because he did it. Oh, okay. he created it. Well, here's a question over here. <laughs> That's what they were all about. He's convincing. He's exactly. My other question is if we did it once, why haven't we done it again? Good question. Yeah, because if they could, you know, so that makes you wonder why. <laughs> There's another question over here. What I'm thinking is who's to benefit from a conspiracy? For example, at the time that we landed on the moon, uh, it was like a, a claim for our nation being great. Well, who was our competition? So, the they, so they would want to uh, portray that it was a conspiracy. <laughs> Well, my, there is another problem with this one, and I'll, it has a little bit. I was uh, trained as an electrician, and I really have a hard time believing they could put resistors and diodes and uh, all these other things in a spacecraft to go clear up to the moon and back and be able to make it work. I mean, you talk, think about it back then. We had, with, a, with the cell phones now, we could probably do it. But back then, we had resistors that were this big and diodes, you're huge. You got to put it into a spacecraft to make it all go up and come back. That's something to think about. Anyway, I wanted to read these off here. A flying saucer crashed in Roswell, a world ruled by reptiles, an Area 51, Bermuda Triangle, the Philadelphia Experiment, and UFO conspiracies. These all have a similar theme. Paranoia activity and aliens or UFOs or something strange. And I wanted to focus on this for a few moments. The Roswell crash in Area 51. I'm gonna move through here a little quickly. Of course, it all started with the action comics, um, Superman back in 19, about 1930s. That's when the Superman came out and he was from another planet and he had superhuman powers. 
Mm -hmm. Flash Gordon came out about the same time. And of course, then in 1947, this took place. They captured a flying saucer on a ranch in Roswell, New Mexico, and no details of the flying disc are revealed. This hit the newspapers in 1947. You can see that there. And today, they have a UFO museum in Roswell. There you go, I'll zoom it up there. It's a UFO museum. It's still there. It averages about 200,000 people visit that every year. And inside the museum, I, I found this one online, they have a picture of an alien, of course. During the 1950s, as the Roswell happened, the country went into a movie craze uh, for about 10 years, creating movies like The Blob, and starring one of my favorite characters, Steve McQueen. Here's one, Riders to the Stars. I made a monster from outer space. And here's another one. See, she, oh, she's got a statement over here. She said she married a monster from outer space. <laughs> There's another one that says it came from outer space. These are pretty much done in the 50s and 60s. And then we came along with these two little things that happened, the outer limits. That was one of the most watched TV series during the 60s. And, of course, Star Trek. And it's still going on. There was about a dozen movies of Star Trek made. And uh, Star Trekkies are all over the place out there. We have a question or statement. Statement. Uh, the U.S. Air Force. Thank you. Good book. That came out of uh, Roswell. It was an active project. Uh, went through the U.S. government, through the, through the Air Force. Looking at unidentified objects throughout the United States and throughout the world, uh, it was disbanded just lately, within the last probably five, ten years, and they've started to declassify some of the documents, but most of them were still classified documents. And it was—it was called Project Blue Book through the Air Force. Interesting. Got another comment back here. I and four of my friends were driving down a country road in the 60s. It was late at night. All of us spotted a huge UFO suspended in the field next to us. It was absolutely huge. It was about the size of a football field. And it was maybe 20, 30 feet off the ground, just suspended. There was nothing underneath it. It was dark. There were no lights, nothing except the moonlight that illuminated this thing. Scared the heck out of us. Thank you. That was <laughs> enlightening. I'm, I'm sorry, but back in the, right around the year 2000, I was teaching a class also on uh, the internet, and uh, one of the students I had brought me a VH test, I mean, sorry, t VHS tape. They wanted me to see this tape they had taken of UFO objects. And she, in the tape, I actually watched it, where these lights actually floated around, and they came in like parallel, and then they would fly away real fast and come back. This was up in the area around um, the Dakotas. And she said they've seen these quite a few times because that was a kind of an isolated area up there. Uh, go ahead. You got a question, statement? Uh, yes. Now that I believe in it, is that in, am I in, in it, um, that she actually saw that it's no longer conspiracy. Oh, that's right. It's no longer conspiracy. <laughs> Okay, John, here's Project Bluebird. 
this is how small it is. It's now in the National Archives. It was turned over to the National Archives in the 1970s. The records include approximately two cubic feet of unarranged project or administrative files, 37 cubic feet of case files, which, which includes individual sightings, which are arranged chronologically, and three cubic feet of records related to the Office of Special Investigations. That was the Air Force's CIA, if you will. It, like I said, they, it, they retired to the custody of the National Archives its records of Project Blue Book related to the investigations of unidentified flying objects. Most of the project has been declassified. And you can go to the National Archives and look at it. But that's a lot of material to just say, oh, just a onesie twosie kind of thing. If you think about it, you remember what the asteroid in Utah came across, or the meteor, excuse me, came across Utah. Everybody's going, oh, what was that? We saw the flash, we saw, we heard the boom, things of that nature. You know, I have documentation that they, uh, I had lunch with them on that night, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> I'm going to move on a little fast because i got a, a thing here. Other movies like E.T., Star Wars, Independence Day, and of course, Area 51 became very popular. Um, they have this out there, Area 51. You can go see it there, Area 51 Alien Center. It's out there just above Las Vegas there. You can drive up and visit it. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had... Um, an area to storm the area up there. They had free the aliens, storm area 51. Uh, they actually had uh, basically on the line, uh, on the internet, something in the neighborhood of half a million people signed up to go do this. And I think only about 5,000 showed up, but, but- The National Guard was there. But the National Guard was there. <laughs> anyway, it's interesting. Uh, here's another one, alien area 51 archives, another video you can pick up if you like. And of course, I don't want to make mention of the movie Stargate. But anyway, those movies and stuff, there's more. I mean, there's, I mean, if you want them, there's a hundred of them out there uh, you can watch. But I want to make mention of this here, Coast to Coast AM with George Nori. Uh, this here is a radio station that's been going on for a while. I'll read it to you. Coast to Coast AM is an American late night radio talk show that deals with a variety of topics. Most, most frequently, the topics relate to either paranoia paranormal or conspiracies. It was hosted by Art Bell from 1988 until 2000 and is currently hosted by George Norrie. The program is distributed by Premier Networks, a subsidiary of iHeart Net Media Network, both as part of its talk network and separately as a syndicated program. This program still airs from seven nights a week from 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It appears in over 600 affiliates and has a repeatedly been called the most popular overnight show in the country. Has anybody listened to it or heard it? It's a great show. You get, you get to hear people come on there and talk about their alien subductions or sightings uh, and paranormal stuff. And if you're driving along at 8 at night, you can turn that on and radio and just have a blast listening to this going on. Very wicked, very wicked. Uh, I also have mentioned Comic Con. Now, because of all these alien stuff, we do have Comic Con. And in 2019, we had 260,000 people showed up at Con Comic Con in Ca California. I just want to show you a couple of pictures of the attendance. Look at this. I mean, it's, it's wall to wall people. It and it costs a bunch too. And it, San Diego Comic Con, look at that. It's just amazing. But anyway, because of that, Comic Con has become not just in San Diego, it is now just about every major city in the country, and hundreds of thousands of people, millions actually attend us across the country two or three times a year at different locations. The next thing I want to just ask does anybody here or on the internet or Zoom have zero type blood? Okay, we have a few people that have zero type blood. We have three. Anybody on the Zoom area? Nope. John, that would be O type blood. Okay, O type. Okay, I correct myself. O type blood. 
Well, this was found on the internet uh, a few days ago. It says, people with old type blood are ETs. Here are extraterrestrials. I know it. Oh, that's what this is all about. Is that a good laugh? But if you have A or A B blood, you are indigenous to the earth, so you're earthling. <laughs> the old blood group was physically brought here by the Anamuki from the Sirius B planet. So I'm, I'm not going to go into this any farther. I just want to <laughs> let you know that you are aliens. That's all. Not Earth aliens, but outer space aliens. So I dug this up and I wanted to be part of this. This is from a, I found on there from the Galactic Anthropology Group. Those who really, this is MAP friends who would have played quite a crucial role in our history and now here, anyway, they go on to explain in this little book and stuff that the Anuki came here and they had integrated the OPED with the people here on Earth, and so they were easier to, uh, I guess, to propagate. There it is. <laughs> so, anyway, it's something to think about. And this is Maya. She's supposed to be from outer space, too. And there's a little more on that. Uh, Elvis Presley faked his death. We know that. He was on Mars also, or maybe the moon. Uh, so the next part of the program is actually we talk about not Adolf Hitler's death, but Princess Diana's death. This is Princess Diana. I'm going to read a little bit here. She died on August 31st, 1997, in a car accident in a tunnel in France. Uh, the, the accident took place uh, quite late at night. Now, I'm going to go read this to you. It's just like the case law thing. See if you can find any kind of irregularities in this here. Now, the one part I didn't mention here, which I should mention, there was two cars that left the hotel. The first car was a decoy, and they were supposed to pull away the paparazzi, and the other car was supposed to take her and stuff and go out and disappear. So this was supposed to be the car that disappeared, I believe. In the early hours, she died from injuries sustained earlier that day in a crash in the tunnel in Paris. Uh, Diana's partner and Henry Paul, the driver of the Mercedes, were pronounced dead at the scene. Her bodyguard, Trevor Reese Jones, was severely injured but survived the crash. Some media claimed the erratic behavior of the paparazzi following the call, as reported by the BBC, had contributed to the crash. In 1999, a French investigation found that the Paul, who lost control of the vehicle at high speeds, while intoxicated by alcohol or under the effects of prescription drugs, was solely responsible for the crash. He was a deputy head of security. Uh, that bothers me. He's, he's a deputy head of the security, but he's intoxicated and high on drugs. And he had earlier voted the paparazzi at the hotel. Antidepressants and traces of antipsychotic in his blood might have worsened Paul's inebriation. And that bothers me again, too. In 2008, a jury at the British Inquest, Operation Paget, returned a verdict of unlawful killing through grossly neg negligent driving by Paul in the following paparazzi vehicles. Some media reports claimed Bruce Jones survived because he was wearing a seatbelt. But other investigations revealed that none of the occupants of the car were wearing them. So there's a disparity there. Diana was 36 years old when she died. Her death sparked an unprecedented outpouring of public grief in the United Kingdom and worldwide. And her funeral was televised and watched by a, pretty much by one fourth of the population. 2.5 billion people watched the funeral. 
The royal family were criticized in the press for their reaction to Diana's death. Public interest in Diana has remained high, and she has retained regular press coverage since then. Now, we're going to go through the death, just like in the case law here. At 020, after midnight, with the four occupants still in the red car, the photographers or paparazzi who were driving slower and were some distance behind the Mercedes reached the scene. Some rushed to help, tried to open the doors and help the victims, while some of them were, took pictures. The police arrived 10 minutes later. It took them 10 minutes for the police to get there. An ambulance was on the scene five minutes later, so that's 15 minutes has passed. The French info reported that one of the photographers was beaten by witnesses who were horrified by the scene, but I'm, that doesn't make any sense. But anyway, that's what they said. Five of the, this is interesting here. Five of the photographers were arrested directly. Later, two others were detained, and around 20 rolls of film were taken away from the photographers. The film was taken away from the photographers. Remember that. Police also impounded their vehicles. Firefighters also arrived at the scene to remove the victims. Bruce Jones was still conscious with multiple serious facial injuries and a head concussion. The front occupant's airbags had functioned normally. That's another oddity. Airbags in the front functioned ah, normally. Diana, who has been sitting in the right rear passenger seat, was also conscious but critically injured. The crash mostly affected the right side of her body, indicating that she was sitting sideways in the seat at the time of impact. Her ribs and arms were fractured. Her right collarbone was dislocated, and she suffered some swelling and bruising to the brain. She was reported to murmur repeatedly, oh my God, and after the photographers, or paparazzi and others helpers, were pushed away by the police, she told them, leave me alone. So she was coherent to a certain extent. Now, in 2007, on Channel 4, a documentary called Diana the Witness in the Tunnel claimed that the first person to the touch Diana was an off-duty physician named Frederick Maurice, who chanced upon the scene. Malus reported that Diana had no visible injuries, but was only in shock. And the mystery gets a little more mysterious, doesn't it? She was reported to have been extremely disturbed and removed a drip by the force while shouting incoherently. After being sedated, no, sedated, and removed from the car at one o'clock, now 40 minutes has passed, almost an hour, she went into cardiac arrest, and following external and cardiac pulmonary resuscitation, her heart started beating again. Diana was moved to the SAM ambulance at 118, almost an hour past now. They left the scene 20 minutes later after putting in the ambulance and arrived at the hospital almost an hour and a half to two hours later from the time the accident took place. Fayette, who had been sitting in the left rear passenger seat, was pronounced dead shortly afterwards. Paul was also pronounced dead on removal from the wreckage. Both were taken directly to the Institute Medical, where the uh, Paris mortuary, not to the hospital. They were taken to the mortuary. Paul was later found to have a blood alcohol level of 1.75, uh, about 3.5 times the legal limit in France. And then there was, after the funeral and everything, a lot of conspiracy theories came out. These are three right here, uh, just really quickly. Uh, in 1998, Faye's father claimed that the crash was a result of conspiracy. Okay. He stated that the condemned of the crash was orchestrated by M16 on the instruction of the royal family. That's one. In April of 2008, Lord Justice Baker's inquest in the death of Diana ended with the jury concluding that they were the victims of an unlawful killing by Henry Paul and the drivers of the vehicle. And the last one down at the bottom, uh, August 17th, 2013, Scotland Yard revealed they were ex examining the credibility of the information from the sources that were alleged Diana was murdered by a member of the British military. 
Anybody got any questions or comments at this point? Lots of questions. Um, well, they did the funeral and they did the parade. Millions of people watched. But there was a couple of things that kind of bothered me about the funeral. But we don't have them on the screen. Number one, she was buried in a, in a the whole ceremony took place and she was in a closed coffin. She, and they never showed her body or anything in the coffin. Number two, the coffin was lead lined. Why would you line it with lead? Anybody here? It was like, if you watch the pie bears carried on their shoulder, it looks like they're really struggling because it weighed close to a ton. I mean, a half a ton. So it was true. Why would you line it with lead? Well, I worked in medical and lead doesn't allow x rays through. Well, something to think about. Number three, she wasn't buried normally. <laughs> She was buried on the Suspensor Estate on a little kind of an island in a kind of like a, you know, like maybe a mausoleum type, you know, place where they put the coffin. And they're not, you can go look at these things from a distance, but you're not allowed to go out there and see it or touch it or come close to it. So <laughs> that's kind of interesting. Um, you can look it up if you like. But with the death of the queen now, and we have a new king, who's what used to be her, her husband, she's alive. Okay, the internet is on YouTube and stuff is now popping out there that she's alive. So here we go, we'll take a look. This is a picture of her taken here. Supposedly, in the last couple of years, she's got a little aging around the face of features there. Here's another comparison to a picture from earlier and to her now. Now, here's another comparison. You can take a look real close if you like. Looks almost exactly like her. So, is that true or not? Who knows? What do you know? What do you, anybody believe this? <laughs> I mean, that's very close. Okay. Anyway. This uh, story came out a couple of years ago. Princess Diana is still alive as wild claims emerge of women with the same features. A wild conspiracy theory is stirring that Diana is still alive as a French socialite who has the same eyes, ears, and mouth. This was back in 2019. The Al Andes theory is fueled by a three year old YouTube video which has racked up 83,000 views and a new video published only a four weeks ago that has been viewed already 600 times. The suggestion goes that Dinah's actually live is a French socialite called Andine de Rothschild, the daughter of the two million pound French family. No, it shouldn't be too difficult to prove. It's just a, really but yeah, the only thing I think on this one here, uh, if she does come out and say that she is this Diana, then all we have to do is a DNA test and that'll be all we're done with. But there's a lot of people that we have like in social rights and also dignitaries that have lookalikes. They have people that actually look like them so they can, you know, just disappear. Or go off the main cases as a uh, to keep out of public eye, and so it's very possible that it's probably a wannabe lookalike. Who knows? But anybody want to make a comment or question on that? Anything? Okay. Anyway. I wanted to make a comment here about something else. Um, it's not on the screen. Uh, this last summer, I went to a family reunion, and um, 
well, the family reunion, I'm sitting there talking to family members and stuff. And one of the members told me that President Biden was dead and that he was replaced by a, a, a robot, a person, whatever, but it's not him. I don't know if anybody's heard this before. I haven't. I don't, <laughs> I, don't <blood>. <laughs> I don't know to tell the truth. Uh, one of the things I did find on the internet, it says that John, JFK's son, JFK Jr., was the one that's actually taken Biden's place. I mean, seriously, these things pop up on the internet all the time. Now, I'm not making this up to try to uh, make you kind of wonder, but it has to make you think sometime. That you, are these for real or just being made up? But anyway, the person I was at the reunion with, they were very serious about this, that President Biden was dead and that he was being replaced. And he had a kind of like a A and I, you know, artificial intelligence hat, it looked like the original, and was being replaced by that. So something to think about. Um, <laughs> I don't. But anyway, you have to take these with a grain of salt. I mean, sometimes and makes, you know, are they really? Well, they're going to go back to theories again. Are they real theories? Are they just made up or something like this? They are, a lot of them are made up. Sometimes on the internet, when I see stuff coming out on YouTube or um, Facebook or someplace like that, they send stuff out. And I've actually had it happen to me two or three times where I'll go on there and I'll go back on the internet and I'll search and hit the words this and then scam or something like that. And it actually says, this is our scams or fakes or fogs. Go ahead. There's a person I know, and she belongs to the flat building. And there's a whole group of them, and they interact with one another and perpetuate their belief that the earth is not round, it is flat. Right. Yeah. Anybody want to comment on that? <laughs> It's the same thing. I mean, seriously, the Flat Earth Society, there's a group out there that don't believe in the um, Holocaust. The Holocaust was a all faked. It never happened. And there's a group of people out there who believe that seriously. Yes, go ahead. We had a question over here. Hold on a minute. A little girl said, well, if the earth is really moving that many thousand miles fast, why isn't the wind blowing us? Why aren't we feeling it? Why well, we throw off? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, anyway, it's kind of interesting. But um, one of the things I want to think about is when you see some of these things, you know, sometimes just turn the TV off or computer. <laughs> Go outside, shake your head a little bit, try to get some sanity back into your thinking. Uh, and hope that, you know, you can live a life without a lot of these things. But anyway, I'd like to present some of these here in the future if you like. Uh, yes. I think uh, one of the worst conspiracy theories that I've heard lately is the conspiracy that Sandy Hook Elementary Massacre never happened. And to me, that is just so sad because uh, the fact that he, anyone would say that was staged when the parents uh, had to bury their children. They were at the school. There was a family from Utah by the name of Parker and their uh, little girl was one that was killed. And I think you have to call back up all those horrible memories for something that has been well established that it happened is taking conspiracy theory too far. I, I would have to agree. There's actually on the list of the first list I had, the Sandy Hook uh, shooting of the children there is one of the conspiracy theories on that list. It's, 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 there's people out there that no matter what you do, they're going to have a 
thought process that's going to be almost anti to what uh, I guess we could say common sense is. And so I'd like to close with this here and wish you all a happy rest of the day. <laughs> and, Thank you, John. Appreciate it. You're welcome.